Hey everyone, this is Don Guccione back with more quick and accessible health and fitness tips. I'm taking a seat for this video because I got a great idea from one of my colleagues at work around a video related to sitting. So the term I heard used in one of our uh, Zoom virtual meetings is that sitting is the new smoking. I've heard that before. Uh, I think it's worth exploring why sitting is problematic. I'm not sure if I'd go as far as say sitting is the new smoking. If I had the choice between, you know, you must sit eight hours per day versus you must smoke two packs per day, I will take sitting. I can think of ways that I can counterbalance the negative impacts of sitting. I'm not sure if I really know a way to counterbalance long-term impacts of smoking two packs, but I digress. Um, it, it is a problem and, and it's consistently ingrained in our society, whether it's sitting at home, sitting for transportation, sitting for work. And with the current situation, if you are working remotely, you're in more of a position to be sitting and not have built in opportunities to get up, uh, go to meetings, go to break room, whatever your normal routine was. If you are working at home, there's not the same opportunity to break up that pattern of sitting. So I actually think there's a whole opportunity for a series of videos and a blog post here to talk about why sitting is problematic and ways that we can counterbalance that. So what we're going to start with today is we're going to talk about muscular imbalances and how that may contribute to back pain. I heard one of my coworkers mention that they're noticing increased stiffness and soreness in their lower back since working remotely. So there's a lot of reasons why that could be happening. This is not medical advice by any means, uh, but let's talk about potential imbalances and why that may contribute to back pain from prolonged sitting. So I'm a stool here, but if, you, um, if you're sitting in a chair, this is about the ankle you'd be at here. Uh, some of the office chairs also, you can rest your feet here, but effectively when you're sitting, you're putting your body into a state of flexion as opposed to extension. So when you look at an anatomy textbook, anatomical position is everything in full extension. When you're sitting, your hips are flexed. So flexed means pulled up, like when you're running. Knees flexed. So extend, flex. What happens when you flex your hips, flex your knees, even if you're not actively applying that tension? The muscle groups are shorter. So you stand up, everything's extended. The joint angle and the muscles are shorter. So they think, okay, this is the way I'm supposed to be. And over time, if you continue that pattern, they'll get shorter and tighter, shorter and tighter, even if you're not actively flexing. You think of like, oh, I'm flexing my muscle, but even if you're not applying tension, they will adapt to that position. Same thing with your back and your shoulders. So think about it, especially for those of us that type, I, I, I have computer workstation, so, if you lean your head forward, your shoulders follow, you can see what happens to your lower back here. So flexion. So that's not the natural position of your head, shoulders, and spine. And that pressure is going to be applied to your lower back and in particular to those muscle groups. Another way that that's going to creep up into your lower back is even if, when you're not sitting, so let's say, okay, I'm standing up now, I'm, okay, I'm not sitting anymore, I feel a lot better. If you've got short and tight hamstrings and hip flexors, when you go to stand up, you may end up like standing up maybe more like here because shorter and tighter, shorter and tighter. And you may not notice this, but if, you, if you're leaning forward, your muscles, in your low back are fighting to keep you upright. That's not their job. Their job is to stabilize your spine. So they're doing double duty to keep you upright, which really your 
bigger muscles down here should be doing. And that can lead to some of that stiffness and tightness. All right, so muscular imbalances, shortness, tightness due to flexion. There's another angle to that. So in addition to short and tight, short and tight, you've got muscles like your quads, which are inactivated. Your glutes, you're sitting on them. You're not using them the way they're intended. They're inactivated. So part of getting into full extension, it's not only having loose and mobile hips and hamstrings, it's having muscles that contract, that flex to get you into that position. So if you're consistently underutilizing your quads because they're completely inactive when you're sitting, your glutes are completely inactive, they get into that as their neuromuscular programming that, okay, I'm just kind of hanging out. So when, when we stand up, I'm just gonna do the bare minimum and not really do my job and activate and get into that posture and upright. Same thing with your shoulders, and your core really like if you're if you're in this constant state of flexion here you're not really activating your abdominal muscles so that's another group that's consistently underutilized when you're in that state of flexion so that is how muscular imbalances can result from sitting from prolonged periods of time so what we're going to do in the next video series is we're going to talk about ways you counterbalance that so we're going to have stretching protocols that we're going to link in for your hamstrings and for your hip flexors. And we're going to have strengthening protocols for your quads and your glutes. And it's, it's really not going to be anything fancy. It's actually, I'm going to use a lot of my previous videos to talk about stretching the hamstrings, stretching the hip flexors. Um, we might actually do a new one to talk about strengthening quads, strengthening glutes, strengthening abs. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, um, but that's the way you need to counterbalance the muscular imbalances that result from sitting. So thinking about that, we've got flexion, chronic flexion, we've got short and tight, short and tight, we've got inactive, 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 we've got pitch forward, and it's causing the muscles in your lower back to do double duty. So again, not medical advice. If you've got back pain, you should see your doctor and make sure you know what's going on. This is something that really can lead to a lot of people's back pain is those imbalances, lower back muscles doing double duty. So we'll see you next time and we're gonna talk about ways that you can counterbalance all these issues caused by sitting. We'll see you next time, thank you.